I work with uh, Chirla, the Coalition for Human Immigrants of Los Angeles and the Youth Project WISA. Uh, and we're going to get started with uh, a press conference. We have a great set of uh, speakers lined up. And, and if you guys have any questions, just uh, ask uh, anybody here. We have press packets in the front table there in the blue and black and white folder. So if you didn't get one, you can get a copy and that explain more about the campaign that we're doing and the organizations that are involved in this press conference. Just before we start, we're going to explain a little bit of why we're having this press conference. This whole week has been a week of action around the DREAM Act, which I'm sure a lot of you know already, but it will enable un undocumented students the opportunity to adjust their status and also uh, fulfill their dream for higher education. Um, this week of action was called by immigrant organizations around the country because we felt that while the DREAM Act did pass the Senate Judiciary Committee with a good vote, we were very disappointed with some of the actions of some of our senators, including Senator Feinstein, and that's why we had this action. Um, the first thing we did on, November, actually which was Wednesday, November the 19th, we had an action at Feinstein's office. We had a joint rally and visit with Senator Feinstein. I'm going to explain a little bit about what happened with the visit with Senator Feinstein and Horacio is going to explain a little bit about the rally itself. Uh, we should mention that for LA itself was a very well attended event altogether. We're rep this coalition is represented by a lot of organizations and some of our speakers will talk more about that. We met with uh, Guillermo Gonzalez, who is the uh, state deputy director for the Senator Feinstein's office in Southern California. He was very receptive to our issues. He wasn't aware of what Senator Feinstein had done, but was very concerned about what she had done and, and actually understood that you know it's, it is of concern what some of the amendments had, especially the one around CEBES. And maybe it was designed to um, prevent students from being a threat to uh, our society. That's what he thought, Senator Feinstein had thought, but it really wasn't a wise decision. So he did say that he would make sure that Senator Feinstein did hear the views of uh, students and immigrant organizations in California. At the same time, when we were uh, meeting with Guillermo, uh, Feinstein's representative, we met, I mean, we had a rally outside the office, and uh, there was about 60 to 80 people making a lot of noise. There was, uh, drummers from uh, an organization called Marta Americana and also uh, Korean drummers from uh, the Korean Research Center in Akasek. Uh, and it's a, it was a student-led rally, uh, chants were in support of the, the DREAM Act, and uh, yeah. we wanted, we wanted sh the reason why to have a rally in front of uh, Feinstein's office is because we want to show how the community feels about Feinstein's actions towards the DREAM Act. We wanted her to know that the community is mad. We are tired, of, we are frustrated, we just went to our office meeting, meeting, meeting with their staff, and, and obviously she's not paying uh, close attention to what we're saying or, or when we address her concerns. So we wanted to show how the community, uh, not just the Latino, uh, but uh, different other communities, uh, how we feel in regards to what Feinstein did and, and her actions to weaken the Dream Act bill. And, uh, we all think that it was very su successful. Uh, again, it was being it was being organized by um, different uh, LA uh, immigrant rights groups throughout. Yeah, working for immigrants. Uh, our first speaker will be Doris, who represents Trilla Wiza. Um, this morning we had a visit with Senator Boxer's office, and Doris is going to talk a little bit about that event. So my name is Doris, and I work with the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles, Chirla. Um, we have a youth component, Wise Up, and that's what I'm part of. Um, so we met with Senator Box, uh, the representative. Um, her name is Liana, and um, she was pretty sympathetic. Uh, she showed a lot of support. However, what we're looking for is for Senator um, Barbara Boxer to um, have some sort of conversation with uh, Senator Feinstein and find out why Senator Feinstein made those decisions, the, the amendments. Um, she did say that she was going to address those uh, co our concerns to Senator Boxer, so we we're going to wait for for uh, uh, see a report back. Uh, the the, the t timing, I guess, is next week. Uh, we're going to have a, a an answer from Senator Boxer and her office in D.C to see what uh, their stand is with the, uh, with the DREAM Act amendments. Thank you, Doris. 
Um, this is, again, a national week of action. There are events happening in New York, Illinois, and around the country. So we want you to know that it's not just L.A., but I do think that L.A. is one, certainly one of the most energetic and vibrant of all the cities. Okay, so our next speaker is, uh, is a student from Santa Monica College, Miguel Cruz, who has actually been very supportive uh, with the GMAT campaign. He's directly affected by, by uh, the, immigration, the current immigration laws, and he wants to again share his story. Here we go. Well, thank you very much. My name again is Miguel, and um, I've been living here in the United States ever since 1989. Uh, I came here at the age of six and uh, from Mexico, but like been living here in LA all my life. Basically, I started off in first grade. And um, I guess the hardest part of like being a student and being under these circumstances is that the age uh, of like 18, when you were about to like graduate um, high school in your senior year, um, that that is the most like difficult year that that a student has to go through because you face many many challenges uh, because your counselors and teachers always tell you that your priority should be education and education should be like like the way you should you're supposed to do things and the way you're supposed to go. Um, but unfortunately, you face the reality that there is no other um, higher education for you out there because uh, you cannot fill out the second uh, question next to your name, which is, you know, like your social security number. And because of that, um, I wasn't able to attend an institution of higher education. I was discouraged to apply to any college or university or any other kind of higher education but a community college which I was even doubting because of the, the, the high tuition rates. Um, because at that time, uh, the AB540 had not kicked in yet. The AB540 is an in-state tuition law that was signed uh, into law in 2002. Um, but that had not been, been in, like, implemented yet uh, since I graduated in June of 2001. So I had to spend like a semester out of school. Um, because I, I really couldn't pay the, the, the high tuition cost of community colleges. And so that's why um, when the AB540 came in, I paid the in-state tuitions already, and that's how I'm continuing my studies right now. I want to become a, a history teacher someday, uh, and sociology teacher, and that's what I'm majoring on, on in a community college. I'm studying in uh, Santa Monica College. And this DREAM Act is very, very important to me and to everybody who is in the same situation as I am because um, it will open up the doors of, of education for, for us all. Uh, because as it is right now, like um, us, you know, the students, immigrant students, can't work legally and we can't drive legally and we can't even go to school. And that is a huge border that is put on us and we have no other way, we have actually no way, of, no means of getting around those things and so we must get the Dream Act, we must get it now, um, we, are, I, we are close to, to getting it and we need the momentum and we need to tell our senators, uh, we need to tell Senator Feinstein to support this Dream Act, to support it in its truest form and not um, amend the bill as she did um, by putting an amendment that will track uh, that, 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 will the, that will make the INS track the students. Um, we don't want to be like automatically deportable if something happens while we are tracked by, by, by the immigration department. Um, we want to just get our education because that's what we're here for and we, we are here to stay. This is our homes. We're not going to go anywhere else. We have been raised here, uh, we speak the language, we, we know the, the system, we know the culture. Um, that's why um, we, we are, we, in this week of action, we are encouraging Feinstein to support this bill in its truest form and like uh, get rid of the amendments that she put in there. And um, that's why um, we also targeted uh, Senator Boxer. Thank you, Miguel. I think it's students like Miguel go through uh, not only here in the LA or in California, but throughout the US. Uh, 65,000 students graduate each year from high schools who want to go into college and get an education, uh, just like Miguel again. But because of the immigration status, uh, they aren't able to, they're not allowed to. Um, and hopefully here, uh, we have Will here who, who can talk 
more about us from a teacher's perspective and how he deals with uh, um, these kinds of situations every day or on a daily basis. Hi, my name is Wilfredo Echeverria and I'm a uh, public educator here at the San Luis Leadership Academy. I'm a math teacher and I'm here to speak on behalf of, uh, from a teacher's perspective, perspective first and also as a uh, student, as an immigrant from El Salvador who actually was affected. Um, when I graduated from high school as an immigrant, I was not able to attend a university because of the fact that I did not have any papers. Fortunately enough, through another piece of legislation, the NACARA legislation, I was able to become a legal resident in 2000, and that's how I was able to achieve my dream of going to a university, um, getting a, a, a degree, and actually becoming a, a teacher as a career. And I um, came back to, I still live in this neighborhood and I teach here, and I see the same, I see the type of students that I was um, at one point, these students that, were, that I teach every single day are students that are immigrants. Are, come from families that are immigrants. A lot of them have the same, uh, similar uh, background that I do. And when they see me up teaching them math, and I tell them about the background and what I went through to get to where I'm at, they realize that it's, uh, it takes a lot and that there's people out there who are gonna support you and there's people out there who do not want you to get ahead and do not want you to become whatever you want to become. So I serve as an example uh, despite the fact that a uh, piece of legislation like the DREAM Act was not in place when I was in high school, I serve as an example of what, what you can do. And if, if this uh, DREAM Act passes, my students are going to have a better chance at their future of becoming what they want to become and dream, uh, fulfilling their dream of going to a university just like I had that same dream. And I remember being in high school and graduating from high school, top of my class, you know, coming from this same neighborhood that they're growing up in, from an immigrant family, and being told that because, despite the fact that I was a, a, a pretty good student in high school, got accepted to both UCLA and UC Berkeley, was not able to attend either one because of my immigration status. And I've been through a lot, and like I said, the piece of legislation that did help me to get my legal residency was the Nakara legislation. And, uh, because of that, I was able to, to attend and continue my education, and now I'm in the process of, of, of getting my master's degree, and I started my career. Um, these are obstacles that I've had to face, and that my students are, are going to face eventually when they do end up realizing that they do want to go to college, but that because of their immigration status, they cannot. And so I'm here to support not only on behalf of a teacher, who teaches immigrant students and uh, students that are going to be um, benefited if this law passes, but as a former student who had to live through that same situation. Thank you, Will. We also have to thank uh, the Los Angeles Leadership Academy for agreeing to host uh, this press conference here today. Our final speaker will be Scott Gudo, who is representing Albert Scott, and he'll be talking about the Dream Team itself. <coughs> from um, one of the organizations that's involved with the Dream Team. Basically what the Dream Team is, is um, local community organizations that um, are helping coordinate, network, um, conduct research, and um, build work in coalition building with other groups in the area. Um, we were approached by some of the students, um, Doris, who we just talked to, who we just spoke, um, about um, being able, basically serving as an advisory committee for these students to be able to um, mobilize people and provide um, guidance in their in, um, what they're doing, and it's very important for us because our organization El Rescate, which uh, means the rescue, is a Salvadorian-based organization in Pico Union. Um, we help all sorts of with different types of immigration things, and basically, it's this bill is really going to affect our community because it's going to allow um, a lot of people to. Um, otherwise, who have, wouldn't have an opportunity to go to college um, or a vision to go to college, um, be able to think about those things and be able to um, basically not end up in a dead-end job, not end up in the garment district or um, another dead-end job. You know, this is, um, it's, it's going to really make our communities more vibrant and, and healthy. And that's why we're involved with it. And, um, yeah. So you've heard from the different uh, perspectives that um, 
that are um, work around the, the, the G campaign. It affects us all. It affects teachers. It affects students. It affects the parents who have to motivate their students to continue through their high school education and try to motivate them to, to apply to colleges. But because of how things are looking right now, um, some of the students are being left out of this education. And what we, what I think we've been really successful with the week of action in the sense that we have addressed our, our concerns to both Senator Feinstein and Senator uh, Boxer. We've let her know that we disagree with these amendments and we made it really clear that supporting the GMAC is an investment for California, for the United States. They, these people want to be doctors, but uh, our political representatives treat us as if we're terrorists. As if, so they put this um, tracking system to make sure that um, we don't do anything um, bad to our communities. But uh, um, on the opposite side, we are trying to help our communities. These are communities who have, who have uh, been part of us. We came in here at the age of five, and the, we, the USSR is our home now. And, but they're, they're, they're trying to send us back home. They're trying, they're, they're, they won't give us an education. It's just, it's just not really common sense for these people. And so, uh, again, I think we've been really successful in educating uh, our senators about our issues. And we hope that in the next couple of weeks, we'll get a, a response from them and hope to get more support from, from, our, from our senators and uh, working together with um, different organizations like the Scott, uh, ACLU, uh, the Free Research Center, NACASEC, we will, we will um, pass this DREAM Act with the, within a matter of, of weeks. And so we, we would like the, um, the help of the, our community members. With your help, we can, we can pass this sooner. We cannot afford to um, um, let any more students uh, be left out of the educational system. We need to um, motivate them. If they want to be doctors, here's financial aid. We won't track you. So it's just a matter of, of the community having also showing support for the DREAM Act. And our organizations will do everything we can to, to pass the DREAM Act as soon as possible. So thank you all for, for coming. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us now or later on. And once again, thank you. Thank you.